too during the festival. Seriously? Mm, I'm so hungry after carrying the omikoshi. Buy me takoyaki. Sure. Hello and welcome back to my YouTube channel. My name is Ashley and this is my channel Planting Ashley. You can find me on Instagram under the same name if you're interested in my plant content there. And today I'm going to be telling you about some tea. I made a video like this a really long time ago back when I actually first got into houseplants and today I'm going to be making it again for the new wave of plant parents. I also thought that it'd be fun to kind of like refresh the whole situation with lots of like plant taboos and etiquette and things like that because I feel like I'm seeing a lot of people kind of break some taboos in, a, in like not a good way so I kind of wanted to go over them. Before we get started though please don't forget to hit like and subscribe. I hope that you will leave a comment, let me know how your day is going. Let me know if you can relate to any of these or if you didn't know about some of these maybe before today's video. The number one thing to know right off the bat when it comes to the houseplant community is that not everyone is friends with everyone else. You might love two Instagram creators or two houseplant YouTube creators and you're like, oh my gosh, I love this person and I love this person or I love this click and I love this click. They might not like each other. <laughs> Just because people have big Instagram accounts or big YouTube accounts doesn't actually mean that they're friends with other other people in the community, which was something that I had to learn kind of the hard way when I first got into the play community. I felt so big and open and what I didn't realize was actually how small the community really was. I remember thinking that these two creators I thought were really good friends, so I added them to like a group DM and it turned out that they were not friends. Don't just go assume that oh this person likes this person because they both make content or because they make the same kind of content or they make the same YouTube videos or you know things like that. It's important to kind of keep some perspective regarding okay just because these people do the same thing does not mean that they're friends or they're compatible with friendship or they even want to be friends. Another thing I wanna get right out of the way is that it is completely normal to kill plants. You'll see people who will kind of like shade others because they killed something. Someone just wants to throw something away and I've seen a lot of pushback on this lately. So there's a lot of creators that are just like, you know, making content where they'll just throw a plant. And then you'll see people in the comments being like, I can't believe you would just throw that plant. That is a living being. Like, why would you just throw that away? And it's like, you know, if someone doesn't want something anymore, they don't have to take care of it. If there's a plant that they have that's dying, they are not obligated to try to save it and that doesn't make them a bad person. And to judge someone for that, I think, is dumb and kind of makes you a bad person. I think judging people in any way is dumb and problematic and you just shouldn't judge people. I guess I'm judging people who judge people, but that's okay because they judge people. Another thing to get right out of the way is that houseplant pests are unfortunately normal. This doesn't mean that you should just like let them live in your house, you know? But it does mean that you're gonna have to get used to maybe seeing a mealybug here or maybe you get a little thrip outbreak and you have to take care of it. While we're on the topic of pests, my favorite thing to use for making sure that your plants stay healthy is Captain Jack's. This is not sponsored. Captain Jack's is a phenomenal way to make sure that your plants stay safe. I use Use the insecticidal soap right now but I also really like the dead bug brew. The insecticidal soap hasn't killed my isopods so maybe that's good information for you to have. I don't know. There's also people who worship the shit out of neem oil and it's a fucking joke. Neem oil is a really good preventative but there are people who act like spraying neem oil on your plants will make it so that number one they're never gonna catch pests or if you have scale you can just spray neem oil on your plants and it'll be fine and it's like that's not how neem oil works. Neem oil is a preventative but it won't deal with the root of your problem so you need to make sure that you're dealing with the root of your own problem either by using a systemic if you feel like that's something you want to step into or by like actually you know removing the things. I don't know. You're welcome to take care of your plants however you want to take care of them but I really do just want to like hammer in that just spraying neem oil on your plants or like wiping them down won't just get rid of plant pests. You have to like actually 
actually treat them with more than just a net like a like an oil there are natural home mixes you can make like there's people who mix neem oil with like peroxide and dish soap and that is much better but maybe i don't know maybe i'll do a video on like natural plant systemics or natural plant like insecticidal soaps or something that something that's easy to make at home and doesn't cost money and then also doesn't have chemicals in it if you're not a fan of chemicals which i mean who is we're gonna get into the big etiquette things here so just stick with me on this because i have a list okay i have a whole list and we're just we're gonna go through it the number one thing on my list is don't fucking ask for cuttings someone on instagram has a plant that you like do not ask if they will cut their plants to give you some. It is like, okay, now that the plant community is kind of chilling out a little bit and we're not having the same like crazy influx like we did in 2020, it's a little bit better. I still get people asking me, they ask for free for cuttings of like an elbow, which I don't even have anymore, but they saw an old video where I had an elbow or they ask for an or they ask for whatever the heck it is that they saw. Usually it's like Hoya cuttings right now. Here's the deal, like even if you ask to pay for it, the person, think about it like, like this like love a plant right like you love it so much you're letting it grow you're not even cutting it for yourself you're just letting it do its thing and then someone walks up to you and they're like hey can you cut up that thing you like and give it to me i have literally had people emotionally manipulate me into giving them cuttings there was this one girl who is now a massive plant grower in the community by the way it's disgusting how she got one of her plants that she since propagated into like hundreds and hundreds of cuttings she told me that her little kid really Really wanted this plant and that they had no way to get it and it was impossible and so I sent her the plant just to find her unboxed like seven on her Instagram like later that week so she completely lied and then like I don't even think I don't even think her daughter wanted the plant I think she just completely made up some reason to try to get me to like give her that plant also I think this would look way cuter like on the couch with me hey Raven the next thing is do not ask for people to follow you back on Instagram or on YouTube. It is really weird. I literally had someone just two days ago, and again, like I'm way less active on Instagram specifically, just had someone ask me to follow them back like two days ago. They were like, hey, oh my gosh, I love your account. I followed you. Will you follow me back? And then also like promote my Instagram. And it's just like, it's one thing to be friends with someone. And then you ask a friend to help, like someone who you know and can trust to help you out, which even then, like, I don't think I would do. To ask a complete stranger to just like do something for you when you like when when people ask me that all that i know that they're looking at me at is like a resource they're not looking at me like oh i want to be friends with you so follow me oh my gosh my bird of paradise leaf is unfurling finally well wow, it's so exciting they're not like looking at me like oh i want to be friends with you they're looking at you like you are a stepping stone for me to get where i want to go so when people ask that it just feels to me like I'm being looked at as a tool instead of a person. And it is like, I don't even acknowledge those messages anymore. I don't even read them. Like I see it and then I just immediately delete it or something. I don't know, it just, it really bothers me. The other reason you shouldn't ask people to follow you back is because it makes it really awkward because they're probably gonna say no. And now they either feel like they have to ignore you or you're making them confront you by making them tell you no. People will be like, oh, the worst thing that they can say is no. And it's like, no, the worst thing that can happen is you make someone else feel uncomfortable. That's, that's the worst thing that can happen. If you want to express a negative opinion of another creator, like to their face, do it in the DMs first. Like, let's say that I did something that one of you didn't like. Instead of picking a fight with me in my comments or picking a fight with someone else in my comments, DM me or DM them first. Try to resolve the issue like, a, like an adult, like a person. Because if you criticize someone in their comments, they're likely gonna feel threatened and they'll probably either just delete your comment or block you or fight with you. And you probably don't wanna fight. They definitely don't wanna fight. They're just trying to live their life, post it on their Instagram. Definitely resolve or try to resolve things in private in DMs first. If someone does something that's like actually legitimately problematic, right? Like I'm not talking about bigotry. I'm not talking about racism. Like call that shit out instantly. But if someone does something minor that like you don't like, like let's say that you're gonna criticize the way that they're watering their plants or the, the timing in which they water their plants or how they water, what they put in their fertilizer, what fertilizer they use, what nutrients they use, you know, definitely talk to them first before you like criticize them on their page. Also, this helps you kind of protect yourself because there are creators 
out there that are mean that you wouldn't know are mean. And if you criticize them and then they don't like that, they could blast you on their Instagram story and now you have a bunch of people harassing you. It's just dumb. So not only does it protect you, but it also protects the feelings of the person that like you're talking to. Most of you, not like you as in people who are currently watching this, most people won't listen to that advice. If they see something that they don't like, they're just gonna like comment about it because like, why not? In my opinion, it's best to like actually try to talk to the person and be like, hey, why do you think that it's good to do this? Then have a discussion about why it, maybe it isn't the best thing to do. You know, starting gossip about another YouTuber Instagrammer is really discouraged. That doesn't mean that there are people who won't do it though. There's just, there's people who will just pick drama because drama is definitely views. Drama is so annoying because no one likes it, but everyone's gonna listen to it. Does that make sense? It's like literally no one enjoys it and it's just stressful for everyone, but people love to hate watch drama and it brings in a lot of views. Me and Gun and Planty would always joke about having fake beef with each other because we thought it would be funny. I still think it would be funny. We should probably still do fake beef. But yeah, just talking shit about other creators in general, like it's it's really important to me that you guys understand that like creators are still people. And I know people say that all the time and it's like, but just like putting yourself out there doesn't mean that people, like if you didn't do anything, if you're literally just like existing, making your content, being an unproblematic queen and people decide to like talk about you in some plant tea groups. Did you know that there's house plant tea groups on Facebook? I don't know if they're still popular anymore, but I don't go there because I used to get talked about there all the time and it was so fucking obnoxious. People would be racist against my husband in so many different ways. My husband's black. All of the old white racist plant ladies would just go off. It was so fucking obnoxious. So yeah, I don't know. My community is small. The creators that exist in it appear much bigger to the people in the community than they would to other people because of the fact that the community is so small. Like for example, my friends told me that they would consider me one of like the main houseplant YouTubers back when I was like posting content every single day. At the time that I was told that I only had like 24,000 subscribers and my friend who told me that has like almost 300,000. And it was just because of the fact that like my videos, even though I had a really small influx of like new, new people who would come and follow me. The people who did follow me and watch me at the time, like subscriber per viewer ratio was really high. So like most of the people who were subscribed to me watched my content. I don't know how to explain it, but there's something about smaller communities, like the plant community, for example, the creators feel so much bigger. And then when the creators do get big, right? Like when you have people like Harley G or David Sheng, like people who just get really, really big, you know, then those creators get even like like so much bigger even then. It's really easy to kind of remove the fact that, oh, that's just a person out there who's literally going to work. That person is just doing their job. Kind of on a little tangent about the gossip thing. Uh, and then also reconnecting to what I said earlier, really make sure that you don't assume people are friends because the last thing you want to do, or don't, don't assume that people aren't friends as well, because the last thing you want to do is talk shit to someone who you don't think is friends with someone else, but then they are, and then they screenshot what you said and sent it to that person, which I've seen happen before. It's really awkward. People assumed that people weren't friends with me, and so they would talk, like other creators would talk shit about me to my friends, and then my friends would screenshot it and send it in our iMessage group chat. And it was always really fun to see like who was two-faced. I don't know, don't do it. Do not do it. Honestly, just don't talk shit and you'll never, if you never fuck around, you'll never find out. <laughs> There's like a fuck ton of ways to grow plants, okay? So telling someone that their way is wrong is hilarious and don't do it. And they're just like minding their own business, growing their plant, doing their own shit, you know? And you're like, um, that's actually, that's actually the incorrect way to do that because I do this and if you don't do this, then like you're doing it wrong. Like that's hilarious because dead ass put my plants in a fucking container and I leave them alone for like three weeks and they do great and they pop off. And other people are like, you have to mist your plants every day. Your house humidity must be this and you must do this. And it's like, my chameleon's easy is doing really great. It's doing really good. My money tree, my Brazil is doing really great. But thank you for your opinion. <laughs> Unsolicited criticism is just not really pog. I don't know what, like, what else to say about it. It's just like, if someone doesn't ask you for your opinion, probably don't give it unless you're being like nice about it. Like there's some people who be like, hey girl, just wanted to say like, I don't mean this in a negative way at all, but you know, X, Y, and Z. Different than being like, oh my God, you're literally gonna kill your plant. Like, oh, it's so annoying. Before you ask someone a question, make sure you do your own research 
first. You could text me and be like, hey, Ashley, what is this plant sickness? But before doing that, you could also Google it. Try to figure out for yourself what's going on. Because something that happens a lot is people will use houseplant creators as like a Google. And instead of Googling something, because they probably just don't even think to, they'll just like come right to us and then ask us stuff. But like, we probably don't know. We don't know your zone. We don't know how you take care of your plants and how much you really water them. Like you could tell us that you water at a certain amount, but like if you actually don't, like if you think you do something, but you actually don't, now we're di diagnosing on like just elements that we're being completely told, which is just never gonna help you. Try to do your own research first. You're always welcome to ask me. Like you can always, just letting you guys know, you can always screenshot shit and send it to me and I will do my best to help you figure out what's going on with your plant but most creators don't like that so try to do your own research first before asking okay i want to go over some plant shopping etiquette this is really really important plant shops have plants plants will drop leaves on the floor and they might lose a stem. You might also just see a plant you like at a store but feel like you shouldn't have to pay for it. And here's the deal. What I'm about to say, I'm gonna say specifically only in regards to like plant shops. I'm not gonna talk about big box stores. I don't think people should like steal plants from anywhere because plants are not a necessity. I think that it's different if you needed to steal something to live. If you literally cannot afford diapers and your kid needs diapers and you're gonna steal diapers, I'm looking the other way. I'm not saying shit. I'm not a fucking snitch. But if you're gonna hurt my locally owned plant store business, if you're gonna hurt that business, we're gonna have some beef. We're gonna have some beef. I could give a shit about Home Depot. I'm not saying it's okay, but I'm not gonna fucking I'm not gonna make it my problem. What What is my issue is when I see people brag about stealing plants from locally owned plant shops. It is so fucking obnoxious or stealing plants from nature. But Ashley, it's nature. The plant just exists out there. It doesn't belong to anyone. That's not what it's about. It's the fact that you're, you're traumatizing a plant by taking it out of its environment and bringing it into your house. Why? Why are you doing that? So that you can have it in your house? Why can't you just fucking like it when it's in the nature? I literally had a girl comment on my Instagram, and I don't know the full story, but two days ago, she left a comment on my Instagram about how she went on a hike with her husband and she dug up two cactuses to bring home. Do you know that depending on the type of cactus that you're digging up, it, it can be a federal crime that will literally send you to jail because some cactuses are very specifically protected by native tribes. Did you know that? Probably didn't, and that's probably why you did what you did. Holy cow. Don't do that. It is so fucking bad. I don't care if there's like a cute little shrub, like a little tiny shrub weed, and you take it out of the ground because you like, oh, I want to grow this shrub at home. This is such a cute, cute little shrub. You know, a little tiny weed that someone is just going to kill anyways. We're talking about a cactus. It was a big cactus too. I saw it on our Instagram story. <sighs> It was like this big. Do you know how old that thing is? It's probably 10 to 15 years old. Uh, I don't know the cactus off the top of my head. I don't know if it's one of the protected one or one of the endangered ones, but she just dug it out of the ground and took it home. It could be a place where that's allowed. It could be a place where it's like, oh, go on a hike. There are actual cactus nurseries that do have, have it where you're like, oh, I want this cactus and they're growing the cactus in the ground. And so then you gotta like pick it up. But I don't think so because she dug it out of the ground with a branch. Is what I'm saying making sense? Don't do that. Don't steal from locally owned plant stores and don't steal from the fucking nature, okay? Leave the plants be, take a photo. The worst thing too is when people steal plants and then they like kill them. And it's like, what the fuck was the point? Literally, what was the reason? One of the last things I wanna talk about in this kind of like really weird rant about plant taboos and etiquette is that you can fertilize your plant year round. There are people, honestly, probably including me at some points because it's like, it's an ad and so it, you know, works. But you might see people say like, oh, it's spring, it's time to start fertilizing your house plant. Bestie, if you haven't been fertilizing your houseplants all year round, you're throwing. You're literally griefing. You're trolling right now, dude. You are literally trolling right now. I'm gonna report you to the DMs, to the GMs, the game masters, because you're trolling. You're throwing right now. Take care of them all year round. You don't need to just fertilize them in the spring. These guys, they like, they like care and love and compassion all year round. It doesn't just need to be during the spring, like during our spring. They're inside. There's 
some some amount of humidity indoors. It's warm indoors. I'm I'm sure you're not sleeping it with it 20 degrees in your house. I hope not. You can fertilize these little guys all your own, and they like it. They really like it. So if someone's telling you that you can't do that, they're lying to you because they're dumb. Final thing I want to talk about is repotting your plants. I'm so nervous I'm gonna catch my hair on fire. I'm like trying to be like very expressive with this because I feel very strongly about these things. But holy fuck, dude, you don't repot your plants, bro. Don't do it. And like here, okay, hold on. I'm gonna get close to you for a second, okay? It is really exciting to repot plants, all right? I get it. I understand how exciting it is and how exciting it can be. You get a new plant, you get a new pot, you put the plant in the pot. It's a really good, it's a really good wholesome moment. We love to see it. We, we like the nice pots. They're very pretty, but use a cloche or a cash pot. You know what a cash pot is? It's this. See how the plant is in this and this has literally nothing in it? That's called a cash pot. This one is the exact same. See, cash pot. This way, you don't disturb the plant's root systems. Oh my God, okay, hold on. I'm about to like go off, okay? <sighs> Do you know what causes plants to grow faster, to give you lots of new growth? It is because they are secure in their home. They are comfy, they are root bound. They can no longer focus on growing roots. So instead, what are they gonna focus on growing on? I'll give you a guess. It's called foliage, i.e. leaves, and we like them. So if you disrupt the root system, guess what's gonna happen to your leaves? They're not gonna be happy and they're gonna stop growing so fast. And we don't want that, right? We want our plants to grow fast. We want them to get big. That's what we like about the plants. So if you buy a plant from the store and then you take it home, not only is it stressed out from being moved from a very humid, warm, bright store to maybe your darker house, now you're also fucking up its root system. So it's like double whammy. And then, then you have people that completely change out the soil and I don't know what the hell is their deal okay and I know I'm speaking very strongly about this because I'm on I'm trying to be entertaining I'm trying to be content like and I feel very strongly about I feel very strongly about this but this me talking like this does not give you the right to go show up on someone's page and be like what the fuck are you doing okay I just want to make that clear all right no one is to be attacking anyone because of what i am saying here very enthusiastically you're watching this video and you do this i'm begging you to stop there are people who take all of the soil out of a plant all of it gone and they completely repot it and they put the roots in do you know how many like little micro roots you just got rid of because there's like major roots right but then there's all those little teeny tiny roots that are like as thin as fibers they're so small and you just threw it all away. Why? Because someone told you you needed to completely change out your soil. When you repot something, you should take it out of the pot, not disrupt it, like just leave it. It's not an outdoor plant. It's not a Gerber daisy. When you take Gerber daisies out of the pot, you, you, should, you kind of squish up the root ball so that it can give the roots space to grow into the ground because they're growing into the ground in a garden bed. You know what you're not doing with house plants? Planting them in a garden bed because you probably don't live in Florida. If you do, don't listen to me. You might be planting plants outside. And then the, in, the, in that case, it's different because you got all the humidity, you got the warmth, you got the temperate climate, you got everything. You know what houseplant people don't have? Any of that. So in another pot, right? It's time for a new pot. What I'm gonna need you to do is simply take it out of the pot like that. Then you would place it in a pot that is two inches bigger, like this one, for example. And then you would simply fill in the soil, put a little bit new, put a little new soil in the bottom, put the plant in, just a little bit. And then put new soil around the sides. And that's it. That's all you need to do. It will make sure that your root system stays intact while giving it new space to grow. And it will hopefully keep your plant leaves still continuously growing as a, you know, it's adjusting to its new home. That's kind of it for my plant taboos and etiquette rant today. I hope that you thought it was entertaining. I hope that you thought it was fun. I tried to go over a lot of things that I feel like I've touched on before. Something that I forget that exists are, people don't watch every video you make, right? Like I made this video three years ago and I'm remaking it now because most of you probably haven't seen that video. Probably would like me ranting about shit. So thank you for giving me the space to come back. I really, really appreciate it. Thank you for being there for me while I took such a long break. Thank you for dealing with all of the sponsor stuff. I am trying to make money to support our family and I don't really have the option right now to say no to sponsors. What you guys could do to help me in those situations is please watch my sponsor content and please just, please keep watching. I'm like begging you. Views on my videos that aren't plant tours are like a quarter of what they are on plant tours. 
and you don't owe me anything i don't owe you anything but if you do care about my content i do see some of you being like i'm commenting again to boost engagement and you are a real one i can't even thank you enough for doing that i'm trying to get my footing back again because i love plants oh my god i love plants i love making plant content i miss it so much and youtube is not promoting me the same way as it was before i stopped to take a break because my depression got so bad i felt like everything was ending I'm so much better now, I'm so much happier now, I'm so much healthier now in so many different ways. And I just wanna get back to making my content. And I really hope that you stick around for the journey because this year is gonna be really fun. I'm really excited. That being said, thank you so much for watching this video and don't forget to check out my YouTube channel memberships. $5 a month and it's super fun. Also, don't forget to join my Discord. I am there all of the time now. I am making a massive effort to be there. So if you wanna come hang out, ask questions or whatever, sometimes I just sit in BC and see if people will come by and say hi, but yeah. And before you go, I wanna show you my outfit because it's really cute. This is my outfit. It's this really cute, so I'm wearing this like white base dress here. I'm wearing this really cute little white base dress. And then this is an apron skirt. Normally I just wear it uh, with a shirt, like a crop top, but I decided to put it over the dress because I thought it would be really cute. And I think I was right. And I like that you can see the bottom of the skirt. I hope you can see this. The dress is there. The skirt goes over, it's like a little apron. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you guys in the next plant section.